I have to admit, it just started off as a little taste. But, I've been unraveling. I don't sleep at night anymore. I freeze. I freeze up. My chest gets all tight. I can't breathe. I just... I just panic. I think the universe is trying to tell me something and I'm finally ready to listen. I'm just not the man that I thought I was. I'm a steel junkie. Honestly, I never expected the Ladybug 3 to amount to anything. But, Super Steels? I didn't picture that. I guess there must be a lot of money in it for Spyderco. And that's exactly what we find in the Ladybug Super Blue. The Ladybug goes far back in Spyderco's history. Actually, all the way back to 1990, the same year that the C-10 Endura and the C-11 Delica were introduced. It's remained in Spyderco's line as the quintessential keychain knife. Sporting a linerless but robust fiberglass FRN handle and a wide quintessential leaf profile, this little ladybug with its three-finger grip actually is suitable for a lot of everyday carry tasks, especially if you have small hands. Well, the Ladybug may be prized for Spyderco collectors because of his long-standing history in the Spyderco line, the real appeal of this knife, of the Super Blue Sprint Run Delica, is its exotic steel. Learning about Super Blue takes you down a rabbit hole of steel production and Japanese history. In Japanese swordsmithing, the finest steels used are called jewel steels, or Tamahagani steels. These steels are produced from iron sand and are used to make common samurai swords such as the katana. While traditional Tamahagani steels are made through a highly intricate smelting process, modern super blue, a type of jewel steel, is produced by Hitachi. The term blue in the super blue nomenclature refers to the color of the paper that the steels are actually shipped in and encompasses a variety of alloys that are available. Blue steel is a more durable version of white steel, shiragami, which is a refined carbon steel still used in knife making. The blue steel is different by providing more corrosion resistance through the addition of chromium and tungsten to the white steel. Super Blue is the highest grade in Hitachi's Aogami line and contains a higher percentage of carbon and chrome to increase hardness and improve edge retention and corrosion resistance. For the purposes of corrosion resistance, the, the Super Blue, which is not a stainless steel, is sandwiched between 420J1 stainless steel you can clearly see the line on the lower portion of the blade profile. This is going to ensure that the cutting edge is going to contain the superior properties of the Super Blue without having so much maintenance required on the rest of the blade. But let's be honest, the reason you would buy this, aside from having the excuse to put another knife on your keychain, is because you've got to taste the steel. And for 40 bucks, this is about as cheap a price entry as you can find. And the quality is there. Well, it is true that the thin spine and overall slicing profile of a full flat grind is going to be very useful. The truth is, is that this knife is primarily for someone who's curious about this exotic and historic steel and is interested in maybe moving up to a knife with a full blade of Super Blue, such as the Sprint One Kelly 3. As far as out-of-box factory cutting performance is concerned, Super Blue definitely does better than Spyderco's Baseline VG10. 
and yet it doesn't seem to have the laser-like quality of ZDP-189. After utilizing the knife on a number of food prep related tasks, I can't report any sort of rust or patina on the blade, having just cleaned it off like I would any other blade after use. But attention to corrosion is something that would require my long-term attention. Talking about size with this knife and how it feels in the hand, there really isn't much play Although the thin lockback is certainly eventually going to develop play with my experience of much larger and more robust lockbacks. You don't get better than a three finger grip and that's just barely with my average sized hands. So this is really a knife that's relegated to light use. But a lot of times size is a context thing and so I really think we need to take the ladybug in perspective. And this is really a large knife. You need to consider the people of Lilliput. And in that land, the spider called Bug is a gigantic scimitar compared to the Ladybug 3. And so relatively speaking, the Ladybug is a good sized knife. For human beings though, better choices lie for a harder use everyday carry knife. The dragonfly, this particular dragonfly is nearing the end of its life. Of course, the Delica, my preferred everyday carry knife choice. And then if you want something full size, you can always go with the Endura 4. All told, the Ladybug 3 in its super blue sprint run variation is little better than a gateway drug to get you interested in trying out this fine steel in a larger folding blade, or maybe even some kitchen cutlery. But don't tell my wife that. So how about a like if that was cool, yo? Or a subscription, cause I'm in the empire business.